What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. For months now, we've been telling you guys that this NFL draft class was not very good at the running back position. In the NFL draft, it is came, it is went, and the NFL told us the same thing. This class was not something that was thought of very highly by NFL executives. It showed in the draft capital, it showed in the landing spots. It really just was very underwhelming from a dynasty fantasy football perspective. But with that being said, let's not let that kill the vibe for today's video. Video. I have my top 10 running backs for Dynasty Fantasy Football from this year's rookie class. There are still some guys that are intriguing, some guys that have pathways to opportunity. So we'll talk about those in today's video. But without wasting any more time, why don't we just hop into my first player? So coming in at my running back 10, this is where I'm going to have Braylon Allen running back out of Wisconsin. He went to the New York Jets round four pick 34 is the draft capital and the New York Jets, they've been looking for somebody for a couple years now to be that running back too. The issue is that Brees Hall obviously is an S tier type of running back, a blue chip type of running back at the NFL level for our dynasty fantasy football rosters as well. So the issue with Braylon Allen is he's not necessarily going to get any type of opportunity opportunity as a running back one for our rosters unless there is a Brees Hall injury. Now the thing is Brees Hall hasn't necessarily been the most healthy running back when he has been at the NFL level. I do think that there is a chance that Braylon Allen can be the number two directly behind Brees Hall but we also have to take into account that the New York Jets they did draft another running back in this class they took Isaiah Davis he went round five pick 38 so they did choose Braylon Allen over Davis but there is going to be some competition in this backfield obviously Izzy Abanacanda from last year as well I do think that Braylon Allen can be the guy who is going to back up Brees Hall but he feels very much like a handcuff to me and if that is the case I don't necessarily like to draft handcuffs in my rookie drafts I like to draft guys that have pathways now obviously if we're getting Braylon Allen in the fourth fifth round of our rookie drafts which I have seen him go there he is probably worth a pick at that point but for now Braylon Allen he's a guy that I'm not super excited about probably more so just a handcuff in case of injury so if you have Brees Hall maybe you prioritize Braylon Allen but there still is competition and it still will be murky right now he's coming in as my running back 10. Now coming in at my running back nine this is where I'm going to have Isaac Garendo running back out of Louisville he went to the San Francisco 49ers round four pick 29 is the draft capital for him now obviously Chris McCaffrey is here he is the guy who is going to be the number one option in this offense we know that we know how good Chris McCaffrey has been but Chris McCaffrey he is a little bit older he is going to be 27 years old this year so there is probably an opportunity for somebody to be the next man up behind Christian McCaffrey now obviously Elijah Mitchell he has been there for a couple of years now and he's been pretty good for them in the past he hasn't necessarily been the healthiest of running backs Grendo super quick super athletic type of guy he had an incredible combine. The 40 was something that was very, very good for him. Now, I do think that there is question marks about Garendo because he did play a little bit in a committee at Louisville with a guy named Jawar Jordan, not necessarily the most talented of running backs. So we will see what happens with Garendo in this offense. But we know that the 49ers, Kyle Shanahan, when they get a running back in here, anybody has an opportunity to become relevant. So I am putting a little bit of weight in this 49ers scheme and in this coaching. But Garendo, definitely a dart throw type of running back. And I do think he has the athleticism to fit this type of scheme. So I am okay drafting him later in your rookie drafts. I've drafted him a couple places and he is going to be coming in here as my running back nine. Now coming in at my running back eight, this is where I'm going to have Will Shipley running back out of Clemson. And Will Shipley, he was drafted round four, pick 27 by the Eagles. So a couple fourth round running backs to start off this video. The thing with Will Shipley, DeAndre Swift, he has left Philadelphia. Boston Scott has left Philadelphia. Rashad Penny left Philadelphia, but they did bring in a guy by the name of Saquon Barkley. Now, kind of a similar argument to what we used with Christian McCaffrey. Saquon, a little bit older. Now, he did get an extension to be here for a while. So we're not going to say that Will Shipley has any opportunity to supplant a guy like Saquon Barkley, but he does have the opportunity to come in and play on passing downs because Will Shipley is very good in the receiving game. Now, Kenneth Gainwell is there. He has kind of been underwhelming for the most part ever since he was drafted by this regime, by this coaching staff here in Philadelphia. So Will Shipley will have to beat out Kenneth Gainwell. But again, you're not going to be using very high-end draft capital to get a guy like Will Shipley. I've been taking him outside of the top 40 players in a lot of these drafts. And really where I do think Shipley will have the most value is going to be in those full point PPR leagues. And that's where he is going to make the most difference for your fantasy football rosters, if he's making a difference at all. But again, he could very well just be a handcuffed type of player for Saquon Barkley. 
but he is going to be coming in as my running back eight. Now coming in at my running back seven, this is where we get out of that handcuff type of territory. I am going to have Bucky Irving of Oregon. He was drafted by the Buccaneers round four pick 25. I think he has a little bit more opportunity than just a handcuff in this offense. Now, obviously Rashad White is there. He performed very well for our fantasy football rosters last year. He had 336 opportunities in 2023. And from week seven on, he was also the running back two in total fantasy points. So obviously Rashad White had a very great year for our fantasy football teams, but we know that they needed another guy here behind White. They kind of took a shot on Sean Tucker last year. We know that they had moved on from Leonard Fournette last year as well. So they were kind of looking for their next guy to be in this committee type of backfield. I think Bucky Irving has the passing chops and I think he's good enough in the run game that he can find himself a little bit of a role. Now, I don't think that he is going to necessarily have a full on role in this offense. I still think Rashad White is the more talented of the running backs in this room, probably more so going to be a 70-30 type of split in this backfield. That's at least what I'm projecting it right now. Maybe as we get into training camp and things like that, that will change. But for the most part, I do think it'll be about a 70-30. But Bucky Irving, he still has some upside in this offense. And if there were an injury to a guy like Rashad White, I think Bucky Irving could find himself in a very, very favorable opportunity for our fantasy football teams. And that's why he's coming in for me as my running back seven. Now coming in at my running back six, this is where I'm going to have Ray Davis running back out of Kentucky. He goes to the Buffalo Bills here. Round four, pick 28 is the draft capital. So, so far, we've talked about all of these guys that have went in the fourth round. Obviously, the fourth round, not the greatest of draft capital for your rookie running backs. He goes to Buffalo here. We know that they've moved on from Latavius Murray. Naheem Hines is no longer there. Damian Harris retired this offseason, so he is no longer there. They've been kind of looking for another guy in this offense as well to spell James Cook. And James Cook, he had a big step forward in his second season last year. There was the offensive coordinator change that did help him. So from weeks 11 to week 18, Cook, he was averaging 20.4 total opportunities per game while finishing as the running back 10. Now, I do think that Cook will be the leader of this backfield again, but Ray Davis, he should be in the mix a lot. And I do think that Ray Davis would profile better on the goal line than James Cook would, which is kind of a knock for James Cook because he wasn't necessarily a touchdown guy last year anyways. But even on that side, Josh Allen is used on the goal line a ton in this offense, so it may not be either of these guys anyways. But Ray Davis, he is a very talented running back a running back that I liked in this process this is about as good of a landing spot as I could have asked for Ray Davis the draft capital is fine enough so he is going to be coming in here for me as my running back six now coming in at my running back five we are in a different tier of running back now this is where I'm going to have Jalen Wright running back out of Tennessee he goes to the Miami Dolphins round four pick 20 and we know that the Miami Dolphins they just gave an extension to Raheem Mostert probably a little bit of a reward for what he did in 2023 with the touchdown numbers now the issue is Raheem Mostert he is a lot older. He is not necessarily a young running back. And we know that that age cliff is probably on the horizon and it's probably going to come any second now with Raheem Mostert. The other guys in this backfield, obviously Devon Achan, a guy that is going to be super talented, but he's not necessarily a heavy touch, heavy type of workload type of guy. Now he is probably going to get somewhere between 10 and 12 touches per game. That's probably the sweet spot for a guy like Achan and he can still be hyper productive with that amount of touches. There is going to be room long-term for I think somebody else to step into this offense. Now, Jeff Wilson, also a former 49ers running back, probably not going to be there very long either. I think long-term Jalen Wright is most likely going to be the complimentary piece to Devon Achan. Maybe it's a little bit murky this year with Raheem Mostert there. Maybe not. Maybe Jalen Wright's talent beats him out already in year one, but I do think long-term Jalen Wright is going to have a good opportunity to get some touches in this offense. And we know that the run game here in Miami is one of the best in the NFL stemming from that Shanahan tree. So Jalen Wright definitely has a lot of upside and somebody that I have as my running back five in my rookie rankings. Now moving on to my running back four, kind of a similar situation as Jalen Wright. I do have Marshawn Lloyd out of USC. He goes to the Green Bay Packers. Now the draft capital is a little bit better. He went round three pick 25. So a day two running back pick for the Packers here. And obviously this season, the Green Bay Packers moved on from Aaron Jones and Patrick Taylor in free agency that opened up about 42% of their carries and 11% of their running back targets. So there is some opportunity here, but obviously the other move that the Green Bay Packers made was they signed Josh Jacobs to a four year deal worth up to $48 million. Now the thing with Josh Jacobs is there's a lot of funny money on the back end of that contract. So 
a four-year deal, $48 million. It sounds like a long time. They could probably get out of this in a year or two if they really wanted to out of Josh Jacobs. And last year, he saw some dips in his efficiency. So maybe it's a little bit more of a prove-it deal for Josh Jacobs than we think. But this pick with Marshawn Lloyd almost immediately kills anything that you thought A.J. Dillon could be. Now, A.J. Dillon, he's been very irrelevant for the most part in fantasy football. He did sign a one-year deal to come back this year. I think Marshawn Lloyd is going to beat him out as the running back two on this depth chart. And like I said, Marshawn Lloyd could potentially have some value here long term if they do decide to not finish that four year deal for Josh Jacobs. So in an up and coming offense with Marshawn Lloyd's pass catching ability, his rushing ability, really kind of being a dual threat guy, I do think he has some value. And even though, again, like some of the other guys in this class, we may not see that happen year one, maybe not even see that until middle of year two. Marshawn Lloyd still has a lot of upside in this offense. And I think he's kind of a value in rookie drafts right now where he's being drafted at. You can get him in that third round and he's one of the few guys that I'm okay using a third round or better draft pick on. So Marshawn Lloyd, he is gonna be coming in here as my running back four in this rookie class and definitely somebody that I'm optimistic about moving forward. Now, moving on to my running back three, this is where I'm gonna have Blake Corum running back out of Michigan. He went round three, pick 19 to the Los Angeles Rams. And that was a surprising pick for a lot of people because of the emergency emergence of Kyron Williams in 2023. Now they have lost a couple of running backs in their depth chart this year. They obviously moved on from Cam Akers in the middle of last season. Daryl Henderson, he is no longer there. Royce Freeman, he's no longer there. So they did need to go and get another guy. I just didn't think that we expected them to go get one of the top three running backs in the class on day two, but they did go get Blake Corum, who has been very good at Michigan during his time in college. Now he is kind of a touchdown machine. When you see what he has done at Michigan, tons and tons of touchdowns. Now, I do think he's going to go in here. He's going to compliment Kyron Williams pretty well. But the interesting thing about this pick to me is Kyron Williams and Blake Corum actually feel pretty similar. Now, I don't know if Blake Corum is going to get much opportunity year one because we know that when Sean McVay finds a guy, he likes to run the wheels off of that guy. So he is probably going to lean on Kyron Williams still as long as he is healthy. But health has not necessarily been one of the greatest assets of Kyron Williams career. I think if there was a time where Blake Corum stepped in as the running back one, on this offense there might be a chance that when he gets that opportunity he never gives it back he's that type of player he has that type of mindset he has that type of talent and although it may be messy here with Kyron Williams I do think that Blake Corum is that good of a player that I definitely am still willing to take a gamble on him in my rookie drafts and that's why he's coming in for me as my running back three now coming in as my running back two in a tier of his own the guy on the thumbnail it is going to be Trey Benson running back out of Florida State he goes to the Arizona Cardinals in round three pick two that is the draft capital that they used on Trey Benson and we've kind of been talking about this Arizona landing spot as a potential running back destination for a year or two now at this point because James Conner veteran running back he's going to be 29 years old and he's also entering the last year of his deal so he could be a free agent at the end of this year what that means for Trey Benson is probably a complimentary role this year while they use James Conner but if James Conner looks like he has lost a step they may just hand this backfield over to Trey Benson right away I think there's an opportunity for Benson to be fantasy relevant year one and year two and beyond I do think that Benson could be one of the better running backs for your dynasty fantasy football teams probably finding his way into that top 12 of our dynasty rankings and even when you look at this offense you got the Marvin Harrison Jr. pick you got Kyler Murray there's a lot of things to be excited about Benson looks like he's going to be part of this new look Arizona Cardinals moving forward and he's really only one of two running backs that I am super excited about and willing to go up and get in my rookie drafts because this year's class just wasn't that great there isn't a lot of opportunity but Trey Benson he's going to be one of the few that truly does have a chance to be a difference maker for our dynasty fantasy football teams and now last but not least again another tier up in a tier of his own we are going to be talking about Jonathan Brooks the running back out out of Texas. He goes to the Carolina Panthers round two pick 14. So he was the first running back taken off of the board in the NFL draft. The only one taken in the second round. And he goes to the Carolina Panthers where they had a failed experiment in Miles Sanders last year. Obviously, they paid him a four-year deal worth $25 million, which did make him the 13th highest paid running back in the league last year but he lost his job to Chuba Hubbard in the middle of the year. Chuba was just more effective when he had the ball in his hands. And unfortunately for Miles Sanders, he is probably a player that we are no longer looking to add to our rosters at all because he is going to be stuck here in Carolina behind Chuba Hubbard, who is most likely the running back too, and Jonathan Brooks, who profiles to be the number one in this offense. Now, with that being said, it is worth remembering that Jonathan Brooks is recovering from an ACL injury, so it could take a little bit of time before he actually is at full speed, back at full health. But when that time comes, I fully expect them to hand this backfield over to him. He is going to get a ton of opportunity in this offense, and even though it may not necessarily be a great offense right away, it is an offense that is improving. Bryce Young, Dave Canales now is the head coach. 
They get Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett in the first round, and you get JT Sanders at the tight end position, paired with the few weapons that they already had. Definitely taking you a step forward this year, so it's going to be exciting to see how the Panthers look in year two. But as far as I'm concerned, Jonathan Brooks, he is the running back that you want to own in this class, and he is really the only running back in this class that has an opportunity to be the starter day one as soon as he walks into camp. And so because of that, Jonathan Brooks, he is going to be my running back one in this year's rookie class. Now that is all I have for you guys today. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and hit that like button. It is the best free way to show this channel some support. If you also want to go watch the wide receiver video that we did on Wednesday, you can go back and watch that video on the channel. I strongly recommend it. And in the spirit of watching videos on this channel, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell. That way you guys never miss a future upload when it comes out. And last but not least, make sure you guys are a member of our Discord. We do have a free Discord linked in the description. On Sunday, we are going to be doing a trade review show for your Dynasty Fantasy Football trades. So make sure you go join that Discord, submit your trades into the trade review channel, and maybe you'll get them reviewed on our Sunday episode. With all that out of the way, I will see you guys on our next video. But until then, peace out.